it's been a long time since I had an example. Let me have four gentlemen from the worship team come. Four gentlemen. Come. Now all of you watch this. These are four fine gentlemen from the worship team. I want to show you the power of models. Are we together? Now, watch this. Sam, you are going to lead. All of you will follow him. You can lead anywhere you want to go and they follow. Are we together? Yes. Now, go ahead. Anywhere at all. Watch this. Their job is to follow. Whose job is the hardest here? The one leading. Are you seeing that? The remaining need to follow. And they are following. He's just walking now. You try it again. Go ahead. They are following. The hardest job here is the job of the one at the first position. You see that now? Because wherever he leads, now imagine that, keep, keep moving. Imagine where he's taking them to. Did you see that? So what do you think will happen in the next few seconds? <laughs> Who sinned that they failed? They simply followed, but they followed wrongly. Are we together? Now, gentlemen, stand here, all four of you. Every one of you, you are at liberty to guess your way around life. Are you ready? Walk anywhere you want to go, hoping you are at the right place. Go. Anywhere. Watch this. These guys all want to make it. Some want to make money. Others want ministry to work. I want you to watch and learn. Continue. Look at this. Sam is on his way this way. David is on his way. This gentleman, this guy is angry. I'm five years in ministry. This thing is not working. I'm showing you the life of some of you right now. Now watch this. Some of them are believers. Look how smart, handsome, and well-dressed they are. You would think their destiny will respect their looks, their clothes. As healthy as they are. This is 2017. Now 2018. Now 2019. Now 2020. Some of them are even praying while they are doing this. God, why is my life like this? I am moving in circles. I've been in Abuja since before some of these little children, you call it, were born. And now they are the ones who are my employees. Watch this. I got first class in school. I agree and I respect you. This is a mistake of many of you. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Now stop where you are. Which of them is worthy of your following? If I ask you, choose one to follow. <laughs> Do you know why you are afraid? There is no organization to their path. Any one of them can be a failure. How am I sure that walking with David will not be a risk? Look where he's standing. This my man is already even standing close to this place. Now, Sam, come. Two of you walk together. You follow him. And then the remaining keep doing what you're doing. I want you to learn. Watch this. Which pattern looks more worthy of your followership? Are you seeing that there is some organization here going on? You see that now? Because we are working based on the assumption that this man knows where he's going. We hope we are right. And this one is following. This one looks like he's now joining them. He's tired of moving his way. He's already coming close. Thank you guys. Watch this. Let me tell you this. I want you to listen very carefully. Transformation and replication is only as hard as the distance between you and a model. For as long as you do not have worthy models or references, becoming is very difficult and very hard. Now watch this. Sam is a worshiper. Come. It is easier in the presence of this man for this man to become a worshiper. Am I right on that? The reason is because based on our assumption that he is ahead of him in terms of grace, experience, 
influence and access. Now, this man can leverage on that provision and become easily. Am I right on that? Yes. Come, come Dave. So if this guy is a businessman, say a multi-millionaire, not a thief, not a crook. You mean it? Am I prophesying? This is my people like money. Make sure you love Jesus above money. Say amen. amen. Okay, so since we've started, let's continue. So this man, remember what is happening in the economy. This guy has distinguished himself. Now here comes Dave, wanting to also be blessed financially. And he's sincerely going around in circles. Are you seeing that now? And he's wondering, is it that this thing cannot work? When God wants to help such a man, God reduces the distance between you and a model. You see, one of the ways God answers prayer is by introducing men to your life. Every time you are praying, keep looking out. Who is coming as an answer to this prayer? One last time, Sam, you take the lead again. All of you follow him. This is the intent of the teaching tonight. To bring organization and excellence to your life. To compress time. To show you that everything you see in prophecy, you can become. Not by guessing your way. There is an ancient path already. The path to the anointing. The path to glory. The path to power. The path to increase. Guessing your way around is number one, pride. Number two, programming difficulty and pain. There is nothing that is new under the sun. Not making money, not doing ministry, not raising children. There are people who have excelled commendably in every area. Lay your hands on your head in one minute and say, Lord, I am tired of going round in circles. Thank you, guys. Thank you. I'm tired of going round in circles. Is a man of God praying. You are about to hear something that will change your life. Now I know there is a way. There is an easier way my family can rise. There is a way the anointing can come. I've been searching for the healing anointing. Genuinely. Pray. In one minute. That will show me the path of life. It is in your light that we see light. Still praying. Few more seconds. Hallelujah. Amen. So, transformation and replication. 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 What does it mean to replicate? To reproduce results in men. Are we together? One of the ways you must produce products is to first have a simulation of the model. Am I right on that? When you simulate the model and it meets your quality control standard, you mark all the parameters that were used to produce that initial model. That becomes the pattern. And notice the making of the second, the third, the fourth, the fifth becomes faster and easier because you are not guessing. Research and development units in many organizations are saddled with the responsibility of testing and trying many models until they come up with a model that they perceive to be acceptable per time. Am I right on that? They now define the parameters that produce that model and then 
they must produce their results. That's how they make cars. So the car in Abuja looks the same. If it's the same model as the car, whatever. You even use the consciousness of models and their quality to identify cars, identify things. You know the difference between a Mercedes-Benz from a Toyota, from a BMW. You know the difference between this device and versus that one because of models. Replication and transformation is easy when people understand the power of followership. Now, let me say a few things before we discuss some principles here. I want to talk about pioneering moves or pioneering anything. I've studied a bit about pioneering. To pioneer means to start. To pioneer means the journey that makes you the model yourself. And let me submit to you that pioneering anything, any move, any dimension is very challenging. Why is it challenging? Because largely you may not have references or enough references. Hallelujah. There are people who are called authorities in certain fields of the academia. And the reason why they are called authorities is because they are given the credit and the honor of pioneering certain fields. Maybe genetics. Are we together? Yes. Maybe, you know, whatever complicated field. And so if they are able to arrive at something for as long as they are, uh, they are alive, anybody who is building anything with respect to their field must acknowledge them and consult with them. They have become authorities in that field. Pioneering any move of God, any spiritual activity is very difficult. Let me tell you this. One of the reasons why you see that we honor fathers is because we give them the eternal honor for pioneering certain things. There have been many moves of God that were pioneered dimensions that were imported to the earth. And the first set, the first fruit of those who received that dimension, they survived things that very few people could survive. You read it from the Bible, you read it through history. Are we together now? Yes. When Paul was sent to the Gentiles, no one had seen that kind of thing because salvation was to the Jews. Now Paul was reintroducing an aspect of the gospel that became a subject of debate for a long time. It brought trouble between Paul and Peter. Peter said, no, listen, this gospel, the Gentiles are uncircumcised people. They are not supposed to be part of this covenant. And now Paul is saying, no, I've encountered Jesus and I've read from prophecy that the same Lord is rich unto all, that salvation is first of the Jews. Now what Peter was saying was that the Gentiles have to become Jews by circumcision. Then when they are now circumcised, they can now receive the experience. And Paul is saying, no, this is a new order. They do not need physical circumcision again. That they are spiritual Jews because they have believed in Christ who was rooted in Abraham. And Peter said, no, I don't agree with this. Pioneering is very hard. Because for many years you will walk alone. There are people who introduce certain products from an economic standpoint in Nigeria. And for many years they walked alone. There are many people who introduce certain things by the spirit. Are we together now? All through church history. Anywhere you see a pioneer of a ministry. A pioneer of a business, a pioneer of a, a dimension in the spirit. They are deserving of your honor forever. In Nigeria here, for instance, we never knew and we never believed that God could raise men to build cities, men to become like cities. But once upon a time, many years ago, those we call fathers today as young men, they went largely to places like Tulsa, Oklahoma, and they saw what God was doing through men like Kenneth E. Hagin and all those who had gone before him. They returned back with an anointing and an inspiration and one by one, you would hear that they went to bushes and began to buy kilometers like madmen with no guarantee. And they turned those bushes, like I said last week, to cities. It was a pioneering grace. 
How about those who started 24 hour prayers? There was no guarantee that that would happen. And there are campgrounds today where people literally pray 24 hours. There are many things that we never knew that the church and believers could come into. And then God sampled a few people. Now, the law is found in Isaiah 9 and verse 8. Give it to us, please. Isaiah 9 and verse 8. The Lord sent a word into, not to Jacob, into Jacob. He sent a word, a dimension into Jacob, and it lighted upon Israel. Every time God wants to introduce a new dimension to men, he will find a man. Say a man. And he will place an unction upon that man and enter a covenant with that man. That man will now model that possibility to the body of Christ. When he models that possibility, then as many who believe that this is a reality, now begin to come into those experiences. Hallelujah. We never knew that there was a creative dimension, for instance, to the prophetic. Most people's idea about the prophetic is prophesying by revealing information. But many of our fathers came and they brought a dimension, a creative dimension. They may not tell you your name and tell you all of that, but men like Baba Debe will say, there's someone here in the name of Jesus. By tomorrow, this will happen. And you hear people shouting amen like madmen. And sometimes they live from that church service into their testimonies. That was where we learned that the creative power, the prophetic word, is not only revelatory in nature, it is also creative. Today, we have stood upon those models and it has helped us to do ministry effectively. Are we together? That beyond revealing details, which is profitable of course, we can speak over people that in the name of Jesus, may God open a door and our faith is anchored on Jesus, but anchored on the possibility that has been modeled to us by those who have gone ahead of us. If you understand me, shout amen. amen. Hallelujah. Ora Robert in modern history, I believe is one of the persons who showed the dignity of kingdom wealth and prosperity that it can happen to a man who was called by God. Until then, people never believed that if you answer the call, you can live a life of dignity. Are we together? Now, there are exaggerated dimensions to prosperity I will always observe. But I'm talking about prosperity with a purpose from a kingdom standpoint. It was Ora Roberts who believed God and brought, I think, the generation of the last, say, 60, 70 years into the consciousness that God can bless men void of manipulation. God can bless men regardless whatever it is they are doing. And he built today the Aura Roberts University. When you get to that campus, you will see a praying hand as a symbol that God answers prayer, as a testament of faith. When he set that model, many people began to believe God. And you see, the replication became faster. Today, by the grace of God, down through history, among the many things we have received, when we are believing God for things, we also believe him for the blessing. You're sitting here today, your comfort while you are listening, void of pressure and void of manipulation, is because of someone's sacrifice. They showed us what God could do and we released our faith towards that direction. Hallelujah. Billy Graham, among many, he was one man who showed us that on account of the gospel, you can fill a stadium, you can gather a crowd of people, not just for self-marketing, but that there is an unction that can come upon a man, that even with the simplicity of your speech, you can gather a whole nation. Billy Graham preached in North Korea. Can you imagine? Every president, he rose to a point of influence. And there are great men. And you know that includes even fathers in our nation who saw that as a possibility. It was David Yongichu of blessed memory who surprised the whole world in modern history. He developed a model with God and encountered an anointing that granted him grace 
to build an auditorium where people would come all around to worship 750,000 people per week are we together young Gicho, blessed memory when he did that our father and the Lord Baba Deboe went and met him watch this they went there to see it I'm saying this because he said it by himself that when he went and stood there that was the first time he had a man of God begging members not to come to the next Sunday so that others will have space have you ever seen that happen that you beg and say please help those who have not come let them also enjoy the presence of God so if you come this week now till miracle service don't come again and our father in the Lord said he saw this and he said my God so God can move like this in a man he returned back and today the RCCG is a global testimony of what God can do I've been there many times. I've had the honor and the privilege of preaching alongside our Father in the Lord. And I have seen this with shock and wonder. When they are buying lands, they don't measure like the way you measure in a tape. You just keep moving wherever it stops. Today we can believe God for great things. Like we say in Nigeria, who dash monkey banana for some of us to be trusting God for big visions and big dreams for the kingdom. We saw others who went ahead of us that God could honor a man beyond your local place where you are domiciled at. I'm praying for you in the name of Jesus Christ. In this season, everything you have seen God do through men that is needed for your destiny, may you come into that experience. Hallelujah. Young Cho has gone to be with the Lord today. For those who never had the privilege to see him, our Father in the Lord, that the Jew is still alive and strong. And today, he has become a model. Every time I have the honor of going to the campground, I just look at that place and I'm like, my God, what did you tell this man? Three kilometer by three kilometer. That is one auditorium. That is one space. That's not the only space. Three kilometer by three kilometer. Hallelujah. I've been to the Redeemed Campground in Dallas. Amazing. Massive estate. As if it's not America. This is God for you. Can I tell you? By this revelation tonight, may your faith be enlarged. Yeah. Shout a loud amen. May your faith be enlarged. Yeah. God's servant Bishop Oyedeko started right from Kaduna. Right from that lowly. There are people today who are in ministry who were there when he was starting. And today God has lifted him and given the ministry a spread across the globe. There is nothing you cannot do. There's no mountain you cannot move. If you have said it, then you will do it. You have a track record of keeping your word. You're not about. <laughs> I remember. In our small way, when we started our little crusade, our whole ushers, you would divide our ushering team by three or four. That was the number of those who came for the crusade today. And we fasted, we prayed, we trained ourselves. But we were not discouraged. You know why? Because there were models before us. So it gave us hope that even though we're just starting, that even though our beginning were small, that our latter end will increase. <laughs> Hallelujah. Many of us would have been discouraged in the journey until we had the testimony of models. And they told us they went through worse conditions in ministry and it planted hope. You know why sometimes people tell their stories? Not just to brag, they tell their story sometimes to motivate someone. To let you know that if God did it yesterday, 
he will do it today. You're not the first person to beg for food as a man of God. You're not the first person to go to bed hungry. There are men who were in that lowly estate and yet the God of heaven exalted them. Hallelujah. So I was generally saying to pioneer any move is very difficult. Now, I must tell you this. There are two limitations that if you are a pioneer of anything, you have to be aware of. If you are not careful, you will fall prey to these two limitations. Number one, pioneering requires humility to keep growing and not to fight improvements when you see it. The danger of pioneering is that because most pioneers are emotionally connected to their pain. They are emotionally connected to the lonely nights. The sacrifices that have gone into doing what they are doing. Anytime they see an improvement on what they have done, they will most likely frown at it. It is the weakness that comes with pioneering. Hallelujah. This is true. If you have ever pioneered anything in any degree in your life, you will know the bias. How many of you have seen parents buy their first car? Remember, the first car that they will never sell. Your dad is a billionaire and yet that first car is somewhere in the garage. Sir, why won't you sell this car? And he will tell you, you let me, this car reminds me that God is faithful. And when the car is scattered and gone, he will keep one tire, he will keep one gearbox, and you, are you worshipping it? And he says, you will not understand. I used to wonder many years ago why a lot of elderly people seem to be emotionally connected to things that didn't make sense to young people. They will keep certain monuments. They will keep certain gifts. You will see a man holding a very squeezed book, holding one squeezed letter, and he will not let it go. And you say, this letter, I got this letter in 1941. This was the first award I received. And the person he's talking to is sleeping. Because it makes no sense to you. So it is not unusual that when you pioneer things and they work at any level, you become emotionally connected to your results such that it becomes difficult to embrace improvement. Imagine that the Wright brothers came back to life and they saw what looked like the initial stages of their invention. They would run away from their own invention. Today we have supersonic aircraft. I mean that can move kilometers within minutes. I'm not sure they saw that far when they started. How about those who started vehicles? You see, let me tell you this. Models must be secured enough to allow improvement without feeling like failures. It is one thing models need to understand. One of the reasons I tell you with all due respect why the body of Christ has not evolved is because the emotional connect of models to the dealings that they had with God may not easily allow them to embrace other dimensions of God because they are emotionally connected to the things that have produced their result today. But God is always in motion. Did you hear what I said? Technology is a lesson to us that any model that you see is not yet the best of its version. Phones, cars, every year there is improvement on the models. It is because of the flexibility of science to allow creativity find its cause that today we have all kinds of things. If those who initially brought for us technology if they sat on what they did and said there cannot be improvement listen the model of healing that we know is the one we saw from scripture and the one that has been demonstrated to us but I, I tell you before Christ returns you will see other models of healing where people will stand from one position and literally speak to nations who would have known that the sun can stand still over a territory but one person did it and just because it's not been done again does not mean it will not be done. If the need arises, the same God can make it happen. 
if making the sun stand still is a strategy for massive salvation, you can trust that the Lord of the harvest will place grace on someone. But the question is when it happens, will you have the heart to believe? See, the current move of God always, almost always fights the next move of God. It is a limitation, the second limitation with models. The current move of God always, almost always seems to fight the next move of God. If I have seen God move this way, if I have seen God lift men this way, if I have seen God prosper men this way, chances are excellent that when I see God move again in a way that is foreign to my experience, immediately I flag it off and I say, no, God cannot prosper this way. Now look up, let me give you an example. I will never advocate carelessness, laziness, get rich quick, and so on and so forth. The model for wealth as we know in our world is diligence, the Lord blessing the works of your hands, and you grow gradually. If you build a house after 20 years, 30 years, men will clap for you and say, that's right, that's how life works. But in the economy of God, there are other possibilities that only few people have revealed. For instance, by this time tomorrow. Now, what if that happens to someone? You have defied all the economic laws you know. That is not throwing away the laws. It is building on that foundation that God can also go this far. How about a fish producing coin? How about manna falling from heaven? What other dimension is there to God that we have not seen? What other dimension is there to the kingdom? What other dimension is there to evangelism that we have not seen? Imagine that for instance, just an example, a man now steps into a dimension of intercession where you pray in a certain way and the Spirit of God can literally make a multitude of people to have dreams of the cross in one night. That can be a dimension. And you find multitudes saved by the next day. Everybody saying, I had the same kind of dream. And thousands of people get born again by themselves in one day. Could it be that that is a dimension that is reserved for the end time? Models are important. But the challenge with models, number one, I repeat, is that because they are emotionally connected to their current results and their experiences, chances are excellent that sometimes they can feel insecure and they can feel like failures if any improvement is added on their initial experience are we together yes let me tell you the truth when i started ministry i didn't see this kind of manifestations that you see now i know there are times you are teaching and then when you start ministering you see that maybe a special healing program and people are shouting jumping up and down but we did not see it in this manner i had to study scripture myself to say i hope that this thing is of god how do you talk and every day people are shouting from start to finish if it's a miracle service people will understand but even when you are joking somebody is still shouting so i needed to go to scripture and say god what is wrong am i all right It was William Branham who would stand on a crusade ground and not minister for a long time and he would say he's waiting for the angel that signifies his revelation. He would stand walking for a long time and later on he would just smile and say he has come and begin to prophesy. Now, I'm not saying you use that model, but I'm saying these are possibilities that have been shown in scripture, have been shown in the lives of men. It would be stupid for any man to go to a river in Abuja and sit down and say, fish, come quickly, bring my house rent. No. But it would be totally, it would be totally unbelief on your own part to shut that possibility from God. If it happened once, it, a portal has been opened again. It will not close. It will only be administered when it is needed. You see that now. 
Every possibility that is open in the spirit creates a portal in the earth where it can happen again and again. Sometimes they are reserved because the saints are not matured enough to walk in that dimension. God seeing that it can lead to another kind of error that will end up destroying the body of Christ. Now, most people who are new in the faith may not understand a strange experience that we used to have many years ago. It was the experience of oil and gold dust. There used to be these experiences. When we started ministry, many people would have these experiences. Oil coming out of their hands. I had videos where oil was dropping from a cross in a church. Not manipulation. You will see it from the video. Jars of oil. You will see feet of angels. Laced with gold dust. Silver dust. As we saw this thing, there was a breakout of it that time in Zaria. Many believers started coming into it. You know what? It now started leading to error. Because many people will go to pray and be looking around their body. They wanted gold dust and God withdrew that sign till today. So there are many things that God will not allow. Not because he cannot do it. He is more interested in the growth of believers. I have cried myself. Many of us who are, have been quite old in this ministry know. I have cried myself and what came out is oil, not tears. Sometimes we don't share these testimonies because we do not want to create a negative pattern. Someone will go now and say, wow, so oil is proof of anointing. And start praying and say, if you, oil is not coming out of your hand, you don't know God. Another movement will start credited to your model. Are you seeing that now? It is the reason why we hide our experiences like I taught you behind the cross and we insist that only that which is consistent is, is consistent with scripture is known and revealed to people but let me tell you there are many many experiences there are some things i will tell you about my life and my experience with god some of you will not even believe it so we shelve it and give glory to god and that which is profitable to the church is what we communicate Many of us here, I believe, are going to be models to a generation. You must beware. Hear me? Models are foundations. You must be secured enough for improvements to be made on what you have laid and yet not feel like a failure. How many of you have seen the foundation of a house? Do you paint it? The foundation of the house is about the ugliest part of that building. It's even so down that you don't see it. Yet that is what holds the building. Hallelujah. All of the aesthetics in this beautiful auditorium is courtesy the strength of the foundation that is laid. So there are people who have modeled certain dimensions of God. But right now God is bringing other word-based scripture consistent dimensions. It's like seals that have been closed for the end time and now they are being opened. We are seeing God move in ways that we never imagined again that he would move. We are seeing God do things now. Are we together now? That may be foreign to the experience of people but is consistent in scripture. I'm saying this, that when you become a model, even if you are Samuel or Eli, be careful when God begins to speak to Samuel in a way you do not understand. Don't call it an attack and don't call it error. Among the many failures of Eli, one thing he did right was to discern that even though his eyes were dim, he had seen that a new move is rising called Samuel and he was secured enough to say if God speaks to you, maybe if I were Eli and I hear that God is calling Samuel, maybe some of us would have killed Samuel and say you would die here and now. Isn't that true? Maybe some of us would have said, if God ever speaks to you, Samuel is a demon spirit. But Eli told him, if he says this, say, speak for your servant heareth. And that became the journey that made Samuel a mighty prophet who ordained the kings in Israel, whose word did not fall to the ground. Many of us are inevitably going to be better than our parents, financially, spiritually, ministerially, but let me give you a word of caution. Never fight foundations because of the beauty of the superstructure. Did you hear what I said? 
Today, when we say the inventors of vehicles, with all due respect, we don't call Toyota, we don't call Mercedes-Benz, we don't call all of these cars, even though they have produced cars at a level we never imagined, the credit still goes to those who founded it. If I ask you who is the founder of electricity today, as much as we know and history has told us, you would not mention the guy working in the power holding company in Nigeria. You would not even walk, mention the one who started solar panels. No, the credit still goes to the foundation. This again becomes a caution for the generation rising. We must never look down on fathers and those who have become models because we may have seen certain areas. No, a foundation is why a building stands. A building can crash down and you can rebuild it if the foundation is right. The Bible says, if the foundation be destroyed. Remember my teaching last week? I told us that the stature of a man in the spirit is beyond the quality of his rema for want of word. If you depend on just the quality of our speakings to measure spirituality, you will make a mistake. You would have said Billy Graham. Billy Graham did not perform many known miracles as we see. In fact, I didn't find any quite frankly in his videos. Of course, I believe there will be others. However, will I ever stand and try to match my stature with Billy Graham today? No. Even a blind man who is not born again knows that there is an east and west difference. Hopefully we will rise in our lifetime, but we are still on the journey and we must recognize it. There's Billy Graham's message online. There's my message online. Many of you listen to my message, but that does not mean I'm greater than Billy Graham. No. Again, our arrogant world will soon believe that we are better. No. We will be an improvement but you see, that foundation that was laid is what has helped us to be able to build today. It is the reason why, among other things, we can go to Manchester, we can go to UK, we can go to America, we can go to Canada, because someone challenged our faith that on account of the gospel, God can pick you from your lowly estate and you can speak his purposes to the nations regardless the color of your skin and that the same Lord is rich unto all. You understand me so far? Shout amen. amen. Can I tell you, I'm saying this to you because you will be a pioneer one day as a father, as a mother, as a leader starting your business, as a man of God. Let me tell you the truth. If as a pioneer, you are the best version of yourself at the end of your life, you failed. If as a pioneer, at the point where you are ending your journey, you are still the best version, you have failed. The excellency of your being a pioneer is that you raise people who become an improvement. By the time Koinonia is 30 years, if Christ tarries, 40 years, if Christ tarries, you see, I may be for want of word, the most respected man of God in that ministry. But I expect that sons and daughters should have risen from this ministry, carrying fire, carrying grace. Their success and their greatness is what proves that we did well. Is someone learning? So pioneering requires humility. To keep growing yourself and not to fight improvements and the caution here is that the last move of God almost always fights the next move of God now listen carefully let me share with you a few principles and then I speak over your life remember what we are talking about followers of them the advantage of having models and having patterns number one this call is to models first and then I'll talk about followers. All models, those who are privileged to be in a position where they spearhead anything spiritual, anything technological, anything economic, they must remain students themselves and never have an arrival mentality. Any model who wants to remain a model, listen carefully, must remain a student 
himself. I have great respect for people who have results and whose hearts are open to learn. I always pray for myself that God will do something in my life. Listen, that God will place an unction upon my destiny that keeps me ever humble even as he lifts me. That the privilege God has given to do the things that we do, that we never become stumbling blocks for others to rise. Are we together? But that while we are doing this, we remain students ourselves. The way models remain models is that they also remain students while they model. Hallelujah. Are we learning? All models must remain students themselves and never have an arrival mentality. This is a rule of thumb. I have seen the anointing in my life, but I'm still a student in the school of the spirit and I will learn I will learn as God is helping us build others. We are also learning from those who have gone ahead of us. Provided you remain a student in the school of the spirit, there is no limit to the height that you will rise. Let me speak over someone. In the name of Jesus, God is beginning to use you to raise others. I'm praying that every pride that wants to eat you up and peg your growth, let that pride die this night. Hallelujah. There's what we call undergraduate. There's what we call postgraduate. How many of you know that there are many times in college, in the university, where the lecturers are also students? Is that true? They are employed as lecturers within the university system and yet they are postgraduate students themselves. They are doing their PhD or doing some other things around the system and yet they are lecturers. They will come and teach with authority and yet they are lecturers. That is how to remain an effective model. You must know that God has granted you grace, whether as an overseer over a ministry, as a man of God, a captain of industry, that even though I am leading the field in my area, wherever God has placed me, I must remain a student. Now, let me tell you the truth. Most of the places today, by the grace of God that I go to, most times I go to be the one to minister. Now, that is a side effect. We get used sometimes to this celebrity life. When you go and you sit down somewhere, ah, you mean apostle is here? Please bring him to the front. Can you say one or two things? Just say God bless you. And sometimes that sincere honor stops models from becoming and remaining students. You get used to being celebrated that you now become embarrassed to learn. You are so used to being celebrated that the moment you have to sit down and learn, you interpret it as failure. Why should I learn? Especially from someone I raised. Why should I learn? No, I know it. There are heights. Let me repeat myself. There are heights we have not gotten to. There are levels in the spirit we have not gotten to. And there are others who have gone there. And while we keep inspiring a generation to love Jesus and to become, we must remain students too. Never be embarrassed as a model if you find yourself in a class in the school of the spirit. Learn with honor. Sit down and learn. Take notes. I wish I could show you my notes. You will be surprised. You would think I were not saved. Because I absorb, I learn whatever I have to learn. My commitment for growth, my passion for growth, for my sake and your sake is greater than my ego. My ego will die a thousand times for me to learn and grow. I will ask questions where I need to. If I need to ask a child a question and say, young boy, you are my son, but how can I get this done? If he has the answer, I tell you sincerely, I will sit down and I will learn. If you are too big to sit down, you will not eat bread. Jesus said, tell the people to sit down before they serve bread. Those who want to collect the bread standing will die hungry while they are standing. You must humble yourself to sit down before the bread is served. Great warriors in prayer, millionaires, you are a millionaire. Congratulations. But is that money you have, is it enough? Can you give to the kingdom and still sleep? If not, there is still something to learn. 
congratulations for what you have done. As a man of God, thank God for you, the spirit of revelation. Thank God for teaching. Thank God for the influence. But is that all your life is about? Could there be that there is something more to learn? Now very quickly, let me talk about profitable followership. I need to teach you this. I've spoken enough about models. The teaching tonight centers on followers. Now your eyes will be open. I'm praying that you will see what I want to show you in the name of Jesus. There are demands to follow profitably. When you want to follow them who God has set as models, there are demands. And if you do not understand the demands, you can be around models and never receive from them. This is a tragedy of many people who are in proximity with the anointing, in proximity with greatness, in proximity with favor, in proximity with grace, and they never rise. They remain stunted. The Gehazi syndrome, the Judas syndrome, close to power, close to grace, and yet they are never beneficiaries of it. Or recipients of it. Watch this. Number one, profitable followership demands genuine connection and loyalty. Write it down. Profitable followership demands genuine connection and loyalty. Never follow a man you cannot be genuinely connected to in the spirit. Never follow a man or a system or a structure that you will not be truly loyal to. You will be doing yourself a disservice. There are many people who have pieces of them everywhere. You see that now? Pieces of themselves everywhere. They are not genuinely connected to anything and anyone and they don't care. They will never credit anybody as touching contributions to their life. It's an embarrassment. No. It's, a, it's an error that a generation is making. Profitable followership demands genuine connection connection from your heart that these individuals these systems these structures have modeled a dimension of God commendable enough to command your admiration to command your connection to command your loyalty let me tell you the truth you will never and I say this under God you will never Hear me, whether in the open or the secret, insult, abuse, and be sarcastic over the fathers of faith. It doesn't matter what happens. It is, it is an eternal covenant I have with myself that I will honor them in life and I will honor them to their graves. It doesn't matter what I see. It doesn't matter what I don't see. I owe them by reason of the model. They have helped me understand scripture. They brought perspective. They have believed. They have spoken over some of us. Even when we did not see the kind of future that God is bringing now. They are deserving of our honor eternally. This is the reason why every opportunity God grants grace to listen to or be with them. Something is deposited. And yet, with all due respect, there are people who have unrestrained proximity to anointings, unrestrained proximity to blessings, and you see their lives. Those kind of people live their lives in pain and offense. They answer yes in the open, and they go back and say, forget this man, forget this boss, forget this person. Oh, yes, sir. Sean, sir. Well done, sir. Uh, you are the man of God. You are my CEO, my prophet, my apostle, my whatever. All that is just blind hypocrisy. And they wonder why even when they kneel down and you lay hands, put oil on top again, place handkerchief on their head or whatever, nothing happens. Because there is a cloud of dishonor and pretense and nothing ever drops from there. Hallelujah. Dr. Miles Munro has gone to be with the Lord many years now. I honor him. One time I met someone who, who knew him and came from the church there. I appreciated and celebrated the person. I said, thank you very much 
Dr. Miles is long gone. There is nowhere I see his books that can bless me that I do not have. I doubt, except maybe there are other materials that I'm not aware of. I doubt if there are a number of his books that I don't have. You draw by honor. You draw by genuine connection. Some of us have been close to multi-millionaires. If only you understood followership genuinely, by now you will not be in this state. Beware when God gives you the privilege of access to greatness. Let me encourage you. Beware of familiarity. Beware of dishonor. Are we together? Do you know the closer you are to the anointing, the harder your chances of receiving because of familiarity. I, 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 I. Glory be to God. Hi, 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 Glory be to God. Hi, 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Profitable followership happens by genuine connection. The hypocrisy of this generation is the reason why people never receive. There is nobody that is deserving of your honor. There is nobody's sacrifice that matters to you. Remember I taught you that there are two kinds of price. The price he paid and the price that men pay. Both deserve to be respected. Our generation has mastered the art of trivializing the sacrifices of people. You hear that a young boy, as a student, he sponsored himself while sponsoring three others. And today he has become a businessman. Yes, what is there? He's just lucky. God just helped everyone. No. Every time you despise what God is doing in the life of a man, you have closed the door to yourself entering that possibility. It is true. Many of us insult rich people. Everybody who is wealthy is a crook. Everybody who is wealthy is a thief. Everybody who is a wealthy is a... No, no. And yet you want it. You are praying for it. Everybody who is anointed is a witch or a wizard. Everybody who is anointed is, must have gotten power. No. You act like that, you will never step into certain dimensions of wisdom and grace. If you can see me as I'm taking, Elijah told Elijah, Hallelujah. I saw the grace for influence that God placed upon Dr. Miles Monroe. You've heard the story. A man who was a man of God, then his church was the largest in the Bahamas. I don't know about now. This guy had access and influence to governments. I said, what kind of grace is this? Lord, I covet this grace sincerely, not just for myself. It is needed as part of the apostolic equipping. And the grace landed and every devil can know that this grace has landed. For many of us, as you are listening, you need to repent because you have a great ministry. You have criticized every man of God. You have criticized every businessman. You have criticized every politician. You have even criticized God. Profitable followership that releases grace upon your life is such that happens through divine connection and loyalty. Number two, what is the second principle? Of profitable connection. Watch this now. Followership only becomes profitable when the learner or the follower remains a student. Luke 6 40. Followership becomes profitable only when the learner or the follower remains a student. When you are following for your making and you have a colleague mentality, when you are following for your making and you have a mentality that makes you believe that, oh, I'm a boss in all, you will never receive anything. It is true. The disciple, watch this, is not above his master. 
but everyone that is matured shall be as his master. The goal when you follow is that God helps you to rise to that position and then when you become as his master, you can become greater in result, but that person remains a foundation. It's a powerful revelation. There are many, many, many people, ladies and gentlemen, who are not willing to be students. They crave to come in the presence of great people. But let me give you an advice. Every time you meet great people, don't be obsessed with taking photos. Be obsessed with receiving graces. There are people who will barge into the life of strangers. They don't know them. You've never seen them. And the next thing, they are picking their phones. Wanting to take selfie. So that they gather all of them and say, look, I've met everybody. Papa, Deboe, look at it. Bishop Oedebo, this is it. Papa Kumuyi, this is it. What from their life should you have to show a photo as proof that you met God through them? No. There should be a deposit. It should be an embarrassment to your destiny that you came so close to those graces and all you were thinking about was social media, not your destiny. Are we together? Oh, I met with this billionaire. I met with this one. Look, there's nobody I've not met with in this country. Can you help me with house rent? How does that sound? I was in a board meeting with the who's and who's in this nation. Sorry, my child has not gone to school. I'm embarrassed. I don't want to say it. Does that sound wise? You justify encounters by the deposits that are demonstrated in your life. Don't tell me who you met. Show me what you carried. Show me what you carried by meeting them. Don't tell me you, were, you met Jesus. Show me a deposit from that encounter that speaks today in your life. Don't tell me you met a powerful man of God. Don't tell me you were in T.L. Osborne's crusade, Reinhard Bonke's crusade. You were not the only one there. You must remain a student when you get into the presence of knowledge with proof minimize speaking listen listen even though what you may hear you may even know more than what you are hearing just listen there are people for instance who will come for counseling and for 10 minutes they are counseling you and yet they came for counseling Good afternoon, sir. I have a lot of problems in my life, but let me first share with you my encounters. There's something strange about me and God. I don't have the time. I don't want to sound like pride, but I hope you have the time to listen. So it started, I have this revelation. I see angels. Have you seen that kind of angel before? And, you are, and the person is watching you. So what brought you here now? Things are not working in my life. With the angels you saw... Are we together? Humility is an antidote for shame and embarrassment. If you can just humble yourself, you will, you will, you will minimize the disgrace by many factors. Hallelujah. Sir, I want, I'm not sure you've ever heard about my situation. My situation is really serious. So what is the situation? As I'm speaking to you now, my landlord wants to drive me out of the house. I don't even know. I'm running mad. Nobody can help me. I don't even know if you can help. Well, let me just talk to you. How much is the rent? Yeah, well, he's increased it to 650,000. Can you imagine? And the person is watching you. What you call a mountain is what your eyes calls it, which is what your mind calls it. To an ant, a mold hill is a skyscraper to humans it is something you just jump are we together remain a student remain a student remain a student i heard baba deboe praying over bishop oedebo and he said what you have seen greater is coming and i said god greater There is no time he speaks over me that he does not say greater. 
It's as if the faith God gave those people back till they see Jesus. There is no, there is no plateauing at any level. Baba Deboe is going all around now doing a light up crusade in his 80s. You would think he should be resting and then he's speaking with joy and confidence. One day I jokingly asked someone close to him, I said, please, tell daddy to be resting. He said, don't waste your time. He said, we'll rest when we're in heaven. Are we together? The strength God gave these people. Today, some of us have received impartation of that spirit of might. There are people who cannot stand for one hour. They must sit down. How old are you? 28. It's not a weight problem. It's just that the capacity to do this work, you did not receive it. And you despise those who have been standing before you were born. They've stood on all kinds of platforms, under all kinds of conditions. You did not contact the spirit of might. Say in the name of Jesus. Shout it. Say in the name of Jesus. I remain a learner. I remain a student. Yes, sir. You are a great man of God. I agree. But remain a student. When you step into the presence of greatness, don't feel mediocre, but listen. Listen and learn. You enter the midst of prosperous people, listen and learn. You have the opportunity, ask questions. Sir, this is the level I am in ministry. God has helped us. If there's any advice you would give me, what would it be? And they look at your sense of honor. You come and park an expensive car outside and you are talking to someone who is blessed and the person wants to shake you like colleagues and you jokingly receive it and say, sir, please, if there is one advice you would give me at this point in my life, and they start pouring from their spirits and leave you wiser. They compress 10 years in a 10 minutes discussion. Profitable followership. Every time the student is ready, the teacher shows up. Did you hear what I said? Every time the student is ready, the teacher shows up. Let me give you one more. This is a very important one you need to know. Profitable followership must factor the limitations in the vessels that they follow. Profitable followers or followership must factor the limitations of the vessels that they follow or the limitations in the vessels that they follow. Never expect godlike perfection from the people who you follow. You will be disappointed. Did you hear what I said? <laughs> this is hard, ba. Listen, no. Never expect godlike perfection from the people you follow. You will be disappointed a thousand times. Not because they are bad. There is this treasure, the Bible says. 2 Corinthians 4 and verse 7, I believe that should be it. Never replace the quest for perfection with sincerity of heart. One day the person you admire as a man of God is going to get angry. And that day you will be disappointed seeing your admired man of God angry. One day you may meet him quarreling with his wife or his child. And you say, how can a man be so anointed? How can Elijah be so angry? And yet God is still using him. And you would think God would transfer the anointing to you because you saw it. It will never come to you. It will still remain on him. You see how God works? By the time you report Elijah to God, God will say, I'm aware. Keep following. <laughs> now you will respect Elisha. What made the other prophets angry could have made Elisha too angry. But he kept following. Elijah, historically speaking, was a temperous man. For disturbing him, he called down fire. What kind of a man is that? Imagine that you are the one following him. What will happen the day is now angry with you? What then happens if you are his wife? Others can run away, but you are there. And yet God will choose to leave that grace with Elisha. Elijah. And the, the prophet said, I hope you know your master is going. They never called him their master. 
You know your master is going. The standard character of offense. Go and do your thing. Let him even go and let us rest. Hopefully one of us will take over now and will be a correction to his madness. And Elisha kept following. Where is Elisha? Don't, don't make me angry. Sorry, sir. And people say, you are such an idiot. You don't have, you removed your brain following Elijah. And one day, one day, temperous Elijah looks at Elisha and says, ask. He didn't say, my wonderful son, you have been with me all these years. You are a good person. What should I give you? Will you answer a man who tells you that you have been following him? Are you following for nothing? He says, I'm about to go. Ask now. What a model. And he said, I have no time. I understand your limitations. I will look beyond it. There is something within you that my destiny needs. And I will endure whatever to receive it. Is someone learning now? Now, the challenge with the body of Christ and the reason why we keep getting disappointed is because we expect God-like perfection in men. I am not, and every man who has limitations and is not working on it must be a foolish man. It is not the limitations of men that destroy them. It is limitations unaddressed. Unaddressed. That's why I said every man should be working on something. You are struggling with anger. Don't just say, I'm like that. What are you doing about it? Hallelujah. But the body of Christ will continue getting disappointed because of our appetite for God-like perfection in men. Nobody can stand that standard of God's perfection. It is a treasure in earthen vessels. Are we together now? Yes. I knew this from the start of the journey. Every time I receive from the fathers, my eyes has no business looking at their limitations. It doesn't mean they don't have it. They are humans. And sometimes it becomes clear and visible in many regards. Whatever you can adjust, adjust for your own benefit, but follow with honor. This is the character of wise followership. Are we together? All the sons of Noah saw their father's nakedness. Why the guy drank, he was it with God there. But he got naked and one of the sons called the brother and said, can you imagine our foolish father? When the father got up, nobody told him they saw him. He knew. He said, all of you come. One of you has done this and he cursed him. A servant of servants shall you be. And you would think God will not honor it. Some of you have seen the limitations of those who have gone ahead of you. Maybe you pray more than them. Maybe you fast more than them. Maybe they have a weakness of money. Maybe they have a weakness of character flaws. And you can stand to be saying, yes, sir. And go in the secret and say, this man is already dead. He will not finish. And later you come and say, sir, I love you. Lay hands on my head. Even if the person climbs on your head, nothing will rest. I assure you. Wow, what a powerful message from... God's servant, Apostle Joshua Selman. Hello there, Transform Believers, and welcome to Transform Daily YouTube channel. And today's video was apt, precise. It's a complete video. You watched it, you heard it, especially if you are in ministry or if you plan on receiving anything ever from any man of God. You need to know the protocols of receiving things from God's servant. You need to know the protocol of followership. This is the only way people are made. The Bible says, follow me and I will make you. This is the only way you are made. We are made by following. We are made by following. Um, Jesus Christ has given us the perfect example. We are made by following. As long as you are a man, God will call you to follow him. When you follow God, God will make you something and God will ask others to follow you. And I like that part where he talked about perfection, you know because a lot of times people want to think that for you to follow somebody the person must be perfect especially in the nigerian churches where i reside by the grace of god you get a lot of questions like oh this man of god is like this he's preaching only like this we have a lot of critics right now please i want to advise young people do not join the bandwagon of people who always see faults in the fathers like apostle said do not join the bad bandwagon of people who are always there to criticize there is no perfect if you get up there you have something to deal with 
there is no perfect person there's no perfect father all the fathers of faith we saw but the only perfect one was jesus the only perfect one was jesus he is our standard he is our standard and he will put things in men he will put things in men things drop from men to men no mantles drop so this is for those in ministry those that god has called if god has chosen you for an assignment you can't do it alone you cannot fulfill it alone you will have to follow somebody you will have to learn from somebody you will have to draw from somebody you have to suck from somebody you have to humble yourself and learn from somebody's feet you have to see the mess of a man of god and god will say this is the person you will follow you have to swallow the pride and follow hallelujah so followership is a very good i i see a lot of men of god there's one man of god i respect so much bishop david abyoye here in nigeria and he follows bishop david Oyedepo for years now for years now he has never he has never thought that that is another is, is a difficult thing and he follows perpetually as his own calling i've never seen a more home, humble man following as a calling you know this is the problem of the church today the lord has not asked some people to go and start off their ministry you are serving under somebody and boom you are feeling like the person is not qualified enough and you want to take over that is why the lord told i believe this is why the lord told Hagar to go back and submit to her mistress sarah because she was trying to feel like uh uh-uh, she's wicked and all that but she started looking at her with contempt she started getting to the point where nobody can talk to her you know followership is key and it's, there's something about the kingdom you cannot follow especially somebody who has the anointing you will know that the person is anointed especially somebody who is a man of god a servant of god you cannot follow and remain the same your life is going to turn around your life is going to change and that thing that come up came upon that man will come upon you a thousand phone you can see elisha is a witness so that's it guys thank you so much for watching i believe that this video bless you i'll see you when we post another video please do well to like this video share subscribe to the channel my name is Kola Dave godman and i'm the admin of transform daily youtube channel god bless you